Hey guys, Matt here today, getting back into 1 Thessalonians 4. Okay, so we left off in 1 Thessalonians 4 talking about the parousia. We're going to pick back up just real quick, just give a real quick picture of that. Then we're going to get into chapter 5, the day of the Lord. Because what we're going to clearly see today is the, the parousia, the coming of Christ and the day of the Lord is one and the same. It's all happening at the same time. We left off in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, for this we declare to you by word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, we who are alive, who are left until the parousia, they're not raptured out in some secret event years before, who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. Wow! What will that sound like? It will be an amazing day for the believers. It will be a horrific sound for the unbelievers. It will be a sound the likes of which we've never heard. We'll be mowing our lawns, we'll be walking our dogs, we'll be working at our jobs, and we'll hear the trumpet of God and we'll say, here it is. Ah, oh, we've been waiting, Lord. And everybody else will be sorely afraid. And what will happen then? Well, and then the dead in Christ will rise first. So Thessalonians, don't worry about the dead. Not only have they not missed the resurrection, but they will rise first, right? Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together. There's the, the catching up right there. It's at the same time as the coming of the Lord. We will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, argue about this ad nauseum. No. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. It's all about the fact that we will always be with the Lord. How much more encouragement do we need? That's it. We're going to be with the Lord forever. It's going to be amazing. All right, so, so just a quick picture. Here it is. I'm, I'm going to use a couple of Greek words. I'm not a Greek geek. I don't think you need to know a lot of Greek or Hebrew. It's not bad, of course. But in this setting, I think it's important because the parousia is the coming of the Lord. It's the unveiling of His deity. It's Him revealing Himself. It isn't the coming and the taking up and the going back. It's the coming of the Lord. And then there's the harpazo. He lifts up the believers. They're caught up with Him. Right? And then there's the apentesis. It's a big party. And then there's the hypentesis coming back with Him. Okay, here's what it's going to be like. Let me give you a... Let, let's, let's paint a quick picture uh, in earthly terms let's look at it this way let's say there was a king and he leaves his castle and for the sake of the story he's a really really good king and his people really love him his subjects really love him he leaves his castle and he goes out to inspect his holdings his people his lands and he comes to a little town right this would be his parousia he comes to this town and he's got his entourage and the people see him and they leave their houses and they run to meet him in the road. They run down the road to meet him, right? Isn't that beautiful? That's the, the apentesis, the meeting in the road. And what do they do? Do they go back with him to the castle? No. They hypentesis, they come back with him in glory. It's a celebration. And when we get caught up with the Lord, we're going to meet him in the air and it will be a celebration, an apentesis. We are going to see Jesus Christ. We are going to have glorified bodies. And as if that isn't the be all and end all, we're going to see all of our loved ones and family and friends who have died before us. We're going to all have this glorious reunion in the sky and then we're going to be ushered back with Him. Why? The day of the Lord has come. Okay? That's today's verse, today's passage. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, starting in, in the first verse. Now, coming the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need for anything written to you. Okay? You yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord, underline that, highlight that, that's the theme today. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape but you are not in darkness brothers for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of the light children of the day we are not of the night or of darkness so then let us not sleep okay we're going to get into that tomorrow the sleeping part but for today we look at this day of the lord here's what paul says 
He says, guys, the day of the Lord is coming. And just so you know, I'm going to remind you, you already know this, but it's coming like a thief in the night. Okay, how does a thief in the night come? Does he phone ahead? Hi, this is the thief. I'm going to be at your house next Wednesday at approximately 1.30 in the morning, so I'd appreciate it if you were sleeping. And if you're not going to be sleeping, could you be out of the house? Thanks so much. No, he comes like a thief in the night. He doesn't announce his, his coming, right? He doesn't, he doesn't give us the time and the day, right? He wants us to be ready all of the time. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling, right? So what does this tell us? He's coming like a thief in the night. Should we have a ministry focusing on finding out when the Lord's coming? Eschatology, it's all about end times. No. No, should we know about that? Yeah, should we look forward to His coming? Absolutely. Should we focus on it ad nauseum all the time? No. Should we predict the date? Should we write a book about how I've got it all figured out? I know when He's coming. No. He's coming like a thief in the night. Should we get a billboard and, and do an ad campaign and build a website and say, He's coming May 21st. I know it. No, he's coming like a thief in the night. In fact, if there's one thing I can say definitively, he's not coming May 21st because he's coming like a thief in the night, right? And if he does come May 21st, I won't have to eat these words because I'll be with him in the air. So there you go. But he's coming like a thief in the night. Look, here's, here's the deal. People already think Christians are weird, right? They, they already think you're weird. Don't give them fodder. Every time there's a new world leader, don't call him the Antichrist. Every time there's a hurricane, don't say, the end of the world is here. These are just the beginnings of birth pangs, right? These are just the beginnings. These birth pangs are just the beginnings. Don't predict the date. No, it's not for us to know. He's coming like a thief in the night. People already think Christians are weird. Man, we don't have to give them fodder, right? And for people like Harold Camping and all these other people who, who, who figured it out, look, nobody in the history of the world has yet to figure it out, and nobody ever will. So why would anybody think they're going to be the first? Well, I had a dream, right? Uh, well, you know what? Dreams can be from God. Dreams can be from Satan. Dreams can be from salmonella and poison chicken, and, and, and they can be from overeating and... They can be from a cold. I mean, look, he says right here, very clearly, he's coming like a thief in the night. So there you go. We don't have to predict it. We don't have to focus on it all the time. We don't have to sit on our porch with a shotgun waiting for the thief to come. No, just be ready. Just be ready. Live your lives. And if anything, tell the lost and dying world about Jesus Christ. Give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't weird them out by calling people the Antichrist by predicting the end of the world, by telling people, I had a dream and I, I think it's coming in the next month. No, 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 it's coming like a thief in the night. You know, and God's time isn't our time. It could be another thousand years, it could be a year. We don't know. Be ready. Tell the lost about it. Be ready. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about the day of the Lord here. We're going we're gonna to go through a lot of scriptures because I think you're going to be surprised, perhaps, um, at this day of the Lord. Because this day of the Lord is, is uh, I don't know if we call it a, a multifaceted. The day of the Lord is a, is a big, big event. It isn't something that is going to happen. It's something that has happened. It's something that is happening. It's something that will be finished when Christ comes back. We're going to look at that, and it is awesome. Uh, starting in, in Isaiah 2, let's just get a flavor of what this day is going to look like. Isaiah 2, verses 11 through 17. The haughty looks of man shall be brought low, and the, pro the lofty pride of men shall be humbled, and the Lord alone will be exalted on that day. For the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty, against all that is lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Skip down to verse 17. And the haughtiness of man shall be humbled, and the lofty pride of man shall be brought low, and the Lord alone will be exalted on this day. Here's what he's saying. Everybody else, everybody else will be brought low. All the false prophets, 
all the false teachers, all the world leaders, all the CEOs, everybody will be brought low on that day and the Lord alone will be exalted. It's going to be a, a very humbling day for man. Isaiah 13, 9 through 11. Behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel with wrath and fierce anger. Cruel with wrath and fierce anger. To make the land a desolation and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will put an end to the pomp of the arrogant and lay low the pompous pride of the ruthless. Listen to this. At the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of His fierce anger. Listen, it's going to be a terrible day for those that don't know the Lord. A terrible, terrible day. It's going to be a day of humbling for man. A day where God alone will be exalted. Skip over to Amos 5, 18 through 20. This, we'll do one more after this and we're going to kind of kind of open up this day of the Lord. Amos 5, 18 through 20. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into his house and leaned his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. It's not the day of the Lord, darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it. Here's what he's saying. This is going to be such a terrible day for the unbeliever. He's going to run. He's going to see a bear. He's going to turn around the corner and he's going to be met by, a, met by a lion. He's going to run into a house or a cave. He's going to leave his, lean his hand against the wall and he's going to be bit by a serpent. It's, it's going to be a terrible, terrible day. Right? Here's the picture so far. A terrible, terrible day. A humbling day of the proud. This is a day for all those who are counting on their religion, who are counting on their good works, who are counting on their own morality, or I've got God figured out. Ah, me and God, we got an understanding. No, it's all about good works. All these people are going to be experiencing this. They're going to be experiencing the, the humbling and the wrath of God. They're going to be humbled. They're going to feel the wrath. God alone will be exalted. And there won't be a second chance or a third chance to repent. That's why this whole rapture, this pre-trib rapture stuff, the dispensationalists where God's going to come down and He's going to set up His earthly kingdom and all of this nonsense, that's why it's so dangerous. People think they're going to, well, when I see planes crash and trains derail and piles of clothes where people got secretly raptured up, then I'll get right with Jesus, right? Or when I see Jesus on His earthly throne and conducting business and there's sinners and, and non -sin and, and, and saints alike and, and I'll see him there then, then I'll, I'll, then I'll repent, then I'll get right with him. It's, it's not true. That's why you need to get right today if you are not born again. This is going to be a terrible day and there will not be a second chance. But what about us believers? Ah, for us believers, this is going to be the coming of our King. It's going to be the final day of deliverance. It's going to be the day that the people in the wheelchairs get resurrected bodies. It's going to be an awesome day, a powerful day. It's not just a day of wrath, it's a day of mercy. It's the same day. Sinners will be forced to their knees and we will be exalted. We will be pulled up in the air on that day. We won't be exalted. He alone will be exalted. But we'll be pulled up with Him in the air. We'll come back with Him and it will be amazing. Go to Malachi 4. We're going to take a look at a, a very powerful verse here because what we need to know is that the day of the Lord has indeed come in Jesus Christ. And it will come. It will be finished when He comes back. Now we're going to shift our focus from the wrath into how the day of the Lord really came in Christ. Here we go. Malachi 4. We're going to read the whole chapter. It's really short and it's really powerful. Read it over and over. It is amazing. Listen to this. For behold, the day of the Lord is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and the evildoers will stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, 
The sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Hallelujah. We shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Isn't that amazing? And you shall tread down the wicked. Ah. For they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Behold, verse 5, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of destruction. What is going on here? What's going on here is, is a, a pretty powerful passage. By the way, as we look at these, these prophetic books, as, as you read these and you read Revelation, you know what? These are not meant to be read literally. These are, these are symbolic books. Will we be leaping like calves? No. But it's painting a picture. Just like Revelation 20, verse 1 through 6. It's painting a picture. Right? And here's what he's saying. On that day, the Lord, on the day of the Lord, we will be leaping like calves. We will tread down the wicked. What does that mean? Well, here's what he's saying, guys. He's saying that the day of the Lord has already come, right? Because the Elijah, the Elijah, the prophet Elijah, who was that? That was John the Baptist. The day of the Lord has come in Christ, right? And the day of the Lord is here. So, so when you get born again, you leap like a calf from the stall. How do you tread down the wicked? When you give them the gospel, right? This is also a picture of when he comes back because we will be leaping like calves from the stall and we will tread down the wicked when we come back with him. Does that mean we're literally going to tread down the wicked? I don't know, but we're going to come back with him and we're going to see the destruction. It won't bother us because we'll have glorified bodies, glorified minds. We will see it all for the glory of God. So, so that's what's going on here. Jesus comes and he says, hey, the kingdom is at hand. What does he mean by that? The day of the Lord is here. That's what he's saying. The day of the Lord, the greatest event in human history has already happened in the coming of Jesus Christ. The apostles knew this. John the Baptist knew this. In fact, if you look in, uh, in Acts 2, go to Acts 2, we'll do verse uh, 17 through 21. Peter knows this because Peter quotes the Old Testament prophet Joel and he says in the last days it shall be God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your younger men shall see visions your older men shall dream dreams even on my male servants and my female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's he talking about? Peter's saying the day of the Lord has already come. This, the sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon shall be turned to blood. That's what happened when Jesus Christ was nailed to that cross and he took those sins. For three hours it was dark, and Jesus ab absorbed wave after wave after wave of sin, of God's wrath. He paid the price for our sin, wave after wave, and it was dark. Now, did the moon literally turn to blood? No, again, this is, this is not meant to be, to, re to be read literally. This is symbolic language, but this is what happened when Jesus came. This day has already been fulfilled. The day of the Lord has already came in Christ. That's what Peter's saying here. That's why he's bringing it from Joel 2 to Acts 2. So Peter knew it. Paul knew it. John the Baptist knew it. That's why they got so despondent when, when Jesus left, right? When, when John the Baptist was put in jail, why did he say, ask him if, if he's the Christ or we should expect another? Because they knew the day of the Lord had came, but he's, he's confused. Why is he not setting up his kingdom now? Peter, Paul, the disciples, they got all bummed out when Jesus left. Why aren't we overtaking Rome now? Well, because it's not for you to know the times and the dates, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will 
be my witness, right? We will share the gospel with all the world. That's our job. Not to predict when he's coming. Our job is to live godly in Christ Jesus and share the gospel. And thus, we propel this day of the Lord. The day of the Lord came in Jesus Christ. It's being brought forth by us sharing the gospel. And it will be brought to completion when he returns. Right now, we are living in the kingdom of God by faith. That's why when we saw in Ephesians, we have every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, right? We are seated with Him in heavenly places. How can that be? Because the day of the Lord has already come, and we're living in it by faith. But when He comes back, we will live in it by sight. It's going to be awesome. When we hear that cry of command, the trumpet of God, we will see Him with our eyes. We will be caught up with Him. We will get glorified, resurrected bodies, and we will see the day of the Lord not just by faith, but by sight. And it will be amazing. So what is the call to us today? Live godly in Christ Jesus. Be prepared. Share the gospel. Don't get caught up in calling someone the Antichrist. Don't worry about the New World Order. You know, the, the disciples, the apostles, they didn't worry about Rome. They didn't, they didn't set up some meetings to protest Rome, did they? No, they weren't worried about the earthly government after they were filled with the Spirit. What were they doing? They were witnessing to the world about Jesus Christ. They were sharing the gospel. And that's what we're supposed to do. The day of the Lord has come in Christ. The kingdom is at hand. Live in it by faith. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ. By that, be a partaker in the day of the Lord. And be prepared because it's coming back. All right, we'll pick back up in verse 6 tomorrow. Peace. The day of the Lord has come, it is being moved forward, and it is coming in completion when Jesus Christ comes at His perusia. Peace.